Okay, so let's continue into chapter two. Uh, so chapter two is really and truly, we could think of chapters one and two as really 1A and 1B. 1A being the qualitative piece, the kind of stuff you need to know, and chapter two being more quantitative. Um, so the lecture covers the uh, kind of the talking points, and then we'll kind of spend a lot of time in class working problems to kind of really get a feel for where the rubber meets the road in chapter two. All right. Um, so uh, system of accounts. All right. So building on what we learned in chapter one, um, business transactions and events are the starting points for financial statements. All right. So you may recall from chapter one, we talked about identifying each transaction. And the example on the slides was, you know, Apple sells an iPhone. All right. Uh, so anytime a company provides a good or service, that's a transaction. Anytime a company receives a good or service, i.e. from another company. So if you're a manufacturing company, General Motors buys tires from Michelin. Well, that's a transaction as well. All right. Um, so that's the first step in any accounting exercise is identifying the transactions. All right. Analyze each transaction using the accounting equation. So the accounting equation, of course, is assets equal liabilities plus equity. You should remember that from um, chapter one. And so we're really trying to figure out which accounts to increase our, let me say it this way, which accounts to debit and our credit based on an increase or decrease of a specified um, transaction. All right. Okay. Um, keeping in mind that uh, the accounting equation must balance before and after each transaction. All right. Record relevant transactions and events in a journal. So this is your journal entry. All right. So we'll do this. Uh, we'll journal. We'll spend a lot of time recording journal entries. All right. Um, we'll talk about the process of posting. Uh, to the ledger uh, and then the preparation of a trial balance but the in my class we're going to spend most of our time making sure that we can accurately record the transactions and events in a journal i.e. can we properly record journal entries all right Source documents are where you might look to determine whether a transaction has occurred and get information needed to record that. All right. And so these are just some examples. Um, purchase orders. All right. Um, checks written. And these could be checks for anything. Checks for the power bill. Checks. Um, for property taxes or what have you. Bills from suppliers. Later in the semester, we'll get kind of, we'll do bank reconciliations. We'll get knee deep in uh, bank statements with that. So these are just some examples uh, of source documents. All right. So this is an accounting course, newsflash. Um, and the idea is that an account is a record of increases and decreases in a specific asset, liability, equity, revenue, or expense. All right, so that's what an account is. Basically a system of increases and decreases in specified account types. All right. At any given moment, the general ledger, or GL, 
is a record of every single account in the system of accounting all right, for a particular company. All right, so we need to understand uh, what assets are. Now, I previously said assets are anything the company owns or controls. All right, so the most basic asset is cash. Companies don't exist for very long without it. All right. And so this is the order you typically see. Uh, the, the order in which I'm discussing these is the order in which you typically see them on a uh, balance sheet. All right, so cash would be listed first, then accounts receivable. What is an account receivable? Well, it's an expectation of future payment of cash. All right, so if I have a landscaping company and I cut grass and then bill uh, for services rendered at the end of the month well if in a particular month I had done four hundred dollars worth of yards but I haven't collected the cash yet I have an asset it's an account receivable of four hundred dollars all right it's an expectation of future payment And we have a chapter, and you might ask, what happens if I don't get paid that $400? Well, we'll have a chapter dedicated to just that, uh, so s stay tuned. You know, we'll cover that uh, in the in a few weeks. All right. Notes receivable, same as an account receivable, just generally a longer term. Notes receivables typically also bear interest, where accounts receivables seldom do so you think of typically you want to collect your accounts receivable in 30 days or less notes receivables can be longer than 30 days up to a year generally all right prepaid accounts um, this is anything that you pay for up front from the business perspective the classic example is insurance insurance is always prepaid all right, supplies are an asset, um, and as they're used, they become supplies expense. Equipment, these are things that generally last more than one accounting year, like vehicles, cars, um, heavy equipment, you know, steam shovels, bulldozers, all of that would fit into the category of equipment, buildings which is self-explanatory and then land all right it is worth noting buildings and equipment are subject to depreciation which is chapter eight which we'll get to later in this term let's talk a little bit about liabilities all right so you may remember from chapter one liabilities are third-party claims against assets in other words generally for a liability you're going to have to pay some cash out in the future all right um, and so they include accounts payable so that is a, basically a bill that's come in but has not yet been paid all right notes payable is the same principle just a little longer term you know amount the company owes but it may not pay for, you know, six months, for example. Unearned revenue, which is a liability because you've collected money in advance and you still have to earn it. And accrued liabilities, which is, um, which are uh, liabilities that, um, have been incurred uh, but not yet settled there's a timing difference which we'll get to in chapters four equity accounts so 
here we see pluses and minuses. These are the normal balances, which I'll get to in just a moment. Let's talk about the accounts first. Common stock. If a corporation issues stock, that's common stock. That increases equity. If a corporation pays a dividend, dividends are payments of cash, typically, to stockholders. So dividends, you see the minus here, dividends reduce total equity. All right. And revenues, uh, which we've talked about previously, but we'll continue to drive home. A company has earned a revenue when they've provided a good or a service. All right. And expenses. Expenses are the cost incurred in the generation of revenue. Expenses reduce equity. Revenues increase equity. And the difference between the two, between revenues and expenses, is net income. 